Wow, what's this? Can someone come in here? I heard my husband's screams coming from the bathroom. I ran to the bathroom and was shocked to see him and screamed. When I looked at my mother in law and sister in law, they looked as if they were shocked. The culprits must be them. I heard their conversation in the morning. They were saying that they were going to end me. The real target was me. I dread to think what would have happened if I had been in the bath. I would never forgive them. As I made up my mind to do so, my husband, who was standing next to me, seemed to feel the same way. I'm Nicole, 35, and I work in a customer call center. My husband, Marvin, is my age and works in a factory. I met my husband at a 24 hour gym. I have been going to the gym for three years now, so I know who I see often. I didn't talk to anyone in particular and often exercised in silence while listening to music on my earphones. One morning, as I was about to use a machine at the gym, the belt on the machine came off. I was in a panic, thinking I might have broken it since that had never happened before. No staff was available to help me at the time, and I was scurrying around half cautious. No matter what I did, I couldn't get it back together, and it was my husband who reached out to me. Are you alright? It's been coming off a lot lately. And he fixed it easily. Thank you very much. My husband's body was muscular and very fit, and he was one of those people I often saw. We began to talk whenever we saw each other. We had a lot in common, such as being the same age and having jobs with irregular working time, and we found ourselves getting along very well. Even though it had not been that long since we met, I could talk with my husband, and without any formality, as if we had known each other for a long time. He was very comfortable. Three months after the first day we spoke, we decided to start dating. After two years of dating, we decided to get married. I was very happy when he proposed to me, and I said yes right away. But my husband asked me if I would come live with his mother and sister. I had no intention of moving in with them. I had no idea what to say. My husband went on to say that he would lock our room for privacy. Well, I know you work irregular hours too. And you don't have to do the house chores or anything like that. My mom and sister don't work, so they can do it. If they say anything, I will do my best to protect you. Mom's got a bad leg, and she's having a lot of trouble without a man to help her. That's what he said. I could tell that he was making sure to make my life comfortable. I think he also knows that I don't really want it. I had heard that my mother in law had fallen in the bathroom and was hospitalized for a while. Even if that was the case, I was troubled. I can't agree to it willingly. Could you let me think about it after I meet your mother in law and sister in law? My husband looked a little relieved when I said that. A week later, we went to greet his family. My husband lost his father in law five years ago. His mother in law was an office worker until she retired. My sister in law is three years older than us, divorced and recently starting living with her mother again. Welcome and thank you for coming. When we entered the house, my mother in law greeted us with a smile. Hearing my mother in law's voice, my sister in law also came to the door and said, Nice to meet you. I am Marvin's sister and congratulations on your marriage. She said cheerfully. We then talked in the living room for a while, and both my mother in law and sister in law were very cheerful people, and I kept laughing while talking. I think I was able to talk with them without any worries. Did you hear from Marvin about moving in together? Sorry, I'm the one with the bad leg, my mother in law said apologetically as we were leaving. I won't interfere with your newlywed life. And my sister in law continued. I met them both and talked to them directly, which made me think it might be okay for us to live together, so I answered, No, no, I would love to. 
they all looked relieved and thanked me. I would be lying if I said I was not anxious, but I felt that with these people, I would be able to build a bright home. A month later, I moved in with my in-laws. As my husband had said, our room was locked and my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were not allowed to enter. I was excited to think that our married life was about to begin. My husband and I both work irregular hours and have jobs with night shifts. We might often cross paths when we pack up our moving boxes, but we will cherish the time we have together. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law were as cheerful and kind as when we greeted them. They did most of the house chores and I only needed to help sometimes. Since my mother-in-law seemed to have trouble walking, I tried to do what I could instead of her. One day, however, my husband was at work and I was off after a night shift. I came home in the morning and woke up in the late afternoon to find my mother-in-law and sister-in-law sitting at the dining room table. Hey, why don't you try to be a little more active doing the house chores? I was so surprised that I could not say anything. It's a good thing you're in such good health even though you stay in your room all the time. I thought I was dreaming because she was talking like a different person from my usual mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll be careful from now on. I replied, cringing. Don't say unnecessary things to Marvin, said my sister-in-law. Yeah, I got it. I answered, went to the sink and washed my face. I was still not sure if it was a dream or a reality, but I did think that I had relied too much on my mother-in-law and sister-in-law for house chores, even though my husband had told me that was okay. I felt a little remorseful and took on many household chores that day. However, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law did not seem to like my house chores and repeatedly warned me about them. While I was cooking dinner, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were sitting on the couch watching TV, and my husband came home. Nicole is making dinner? You must be tired after a night nice shift. He looked surprised and was about to say something to my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. No, I wanted you to eat my home-cooked food once in a while, so I'm in charge of dinner tonight. My husband looked very happy when I replied. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law seemed like different people during the meal than they were during the day. It's so delicious, Nicole. You are a very good cook. You should teach me how to cook next time. They were so cheerful. I thought they must have two different personalities. After that, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law started giving me a hard time on the days when my husband was away. I used to live alone, so it's not that I can't do household chores. I was a little bothered by the warnings they give me because my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were always dissatisfied with my ability to do household chores. One day, while my husband and I were watching TV, my mother-in-law got up to go to the bathroom. She was having a bad day and seemed to be having a hard time walking, so I got up and helped her up. A few steps later, my mother-in-law suddenly fell. Ouch! Nicole! Why are you pushing me? She said, and she was cowering, holding her leg. I, of course, did not push her. From my point of view, it looked as if my mother-in-law had fallen on purpose. Hearing my mother-in-law's voice, my husband ran over to her and said, Mom, are you okay? Nicole, did you push her? And looked at me. When I tried to deny it, she pushed me so hard. Actually, it happened a lot when Marvin wasn't around. It was awful because I knew that she didn't want to live with us. And made a crying imitation. Then my sister-in-law came out of her room. Mom, did she do it to you again? She deliberately glared at me. I could not understand what is happening. Nicole, if you have a complaint, tell me. You don't have to push my mom. My husband yelled at me. In all the time I've spent with my husband, this is the first time he's ever raised his voice at me. My husband didn't see the moment my mother-in-law fell. 
I was shocked that he assumed I did it and that he didn't believe I wouldn't do such a thing. I did not do such a thing. I started to cry as I said this, so I ran away to my room. As I cried, I looked at my sister-in-law's face and she seemed to be grinning. It was definitely on purpose. After a while, my husband came to my room. I'm sorry for yelling at you. Maybe it looked like you pushed her when you actually supported her because mom is having trouble walking to begin with. So you don't need to worry, he said. I was glad he apologized, but he didn't seem to believe in his wildest dreams that his mother had intentionally fallen. It also seemed as if he didn't believe me completely. I then stopped supporting my mother-in-law while working because I didn't want to be accused of anything. After a month later, I came home at 4 a.m. after working the night shift. I entered the house quietly so as not to make a sound, since that is the time when everyone is usually asleep. However, that day I felt as if someone was awake. I thought it might be my husband, and as I walked toward the living room, I heard a whisper from the bathroom. I put my ear to the bathroom door. This must be the end of my daughter-in-law. Yeah, this will be the end for her. I heard the voices of my mother-in-law and sister-in-law saying that. Their conversation sounded dangerous. I was terrified of what they would do to me. I went to my room being careful not to make any noise so that the two of them would not find me. I went to bed without taking a bath, but I couldn't sleep because I couldn't stop thinking about what had just happened. I was going to a friend's wedding the next day. I hardly slept at all, but for fear of what they might do to me if I stayed in this house, I decided to leave the house for the day. I'm going shopping for the wedding tomorrow, and I left the house at the same time as him. You didn't sleep much, didn't you? He seemed to be worried about me. I called my husband that day and we decided to have dinner and then went home together. I could not talk to my husband about what has happened this morning. When we arrived home, my husband said, There's a TV program I want to watch today. He sat down on the sofa. My mother-in-law saw this and seemed to be very happy. Nicole, you need to leave the house early in the morning to attend a wedding, right? Go take a bath first she said. I thought it was strange that she suggested I take a bath. I am usually the last to take a bath. I found it suspicious, so I went to the bathroom to look around and saw some black liquid floating in the bathtub. I couldn't quite figure out what it was, perhaps some kind of strange bath salts, but it smelled somewhat peculiar. But I am afraid to go in first because of the conversation I heard this morning. I made sure my mother-in-law and sister-in-law are talking in the kitchen and told my husband. You still have 30 minutes before the show starts, so why don't you go ahead and take a bath? I say in a voice that only my husband can hear. You are right. I'll go take a quick bath. And then my husband headed for the bathroom. I sat down on the couch instead of my husband. What the hell? Can someone come in here for a minute? I heard my husband screaming from the bathroom. I think it was only about three seconds after I heard him get into the bath. I rushed over and saw that my husband's body was stained black. I screamed in shock. I looked behind me and saw my mother-in-law and sister-in-law standing there looking pale. What is going on? My husband looked panicked. I asked my mother-in-law, You prepared the bath, didn't you? What is that black liquid? My mother-in-law was cringing. I thought you went to take the bath, Nicole. My sister-in-law is standing next to her in a cold sweat. Then my husband smelled the liquid and said, Isn't this hair color by any chance? What are you going to do if it gets on your skin? It will be hard to get it off, right? Neither my mother-in-law nor sister-in-law said anything, so my husband got out of the bath and moved to the living room. I had read on the internet that makeup remover would remove it, so I lent my husband the makeup remover and he tried his best to scrub it off, but it didn't seem to be coming off. 
I was horrified to think what would have happened if I had been in there. I have to go to a wedding the next day with black all over my body. On top of that, I have very sensitive skin. I had my hair dyed once, but even though I had it done with a skin-friendly colorant, it hurt so much during the process that I had to stop halfway through. My scalp was quite tingly and sore, and I was sick for a while after that. If I were to take a bath with hair color in it, I would not only be black all over. I would probably have been in serious trouble with itching and pain all over my body. Even scrubbing hard to remove it would have been very rough on my skin. I am horrified to think that my mother-in-law and sister-in-law knew about my sensitive skin and did it. I helped my husband get the hair color off his skin. Seeing us frantically trying to remove it, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law looked panic and were whispering something to each other. It wasn't completely off, but it had gotten to the point where it was much less noticeable. I need to talk to all of you. Please have a seat here. I called them to the dining room. I heard something this morning. Around 4 a.m., you two were in the bathroom, right? My sister-in-law replied, What are you talking about? Of course we were sleeping in the early morning. She said vigorously, but she was impatient. What were they talking about? My husband asked. They said that this is the end of his wife. I said, and my husband looked surprised. What do you mean by that? He asks. Then my mother-in-law said, You were just sleepwalking. You don't have any proof of that. I pointed at my husband and said, This is the proof. And when we came home, you offered me a bath, didn't you? I thought it was strange. I told you that I will attend a wedding tomorrow and that my skin was sensitive, right? My sister-in-law said, It was just a prank. My husband said, A prank? My sister-in-law became silent when my husband said with a frightening look on his face. Then my mother-in-law said, Nicole, it's all because of you. You don't cooperate with the house chores at all. She sounded like a child. Then my husband said, Are you serious about that? Nicole works, so she does the house chores whenever she can, right? There are things you're allowed to do and things you're not allowed to do just because you were unhappy. Don't be silly. He yelled at my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. I have put up with unreasonable things said to me until now. Do you have such a grudge against me? There is no way this can be just a prank. I absolutely will not forgive you guys. Hearing our words, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law began to cry. I'm sorry, we went too far. Then my husband said, I will never forgive you either. I don't want to be with a family with people who do such things. And I want you to leave the house tomorrow. You can't ask us to leave. We have nowhere to go. My mother-in-law said, but my husband answered, I don't know about that. There's no way I can live with you anymore. Get ready to leave by tomorrow. When I returned to my room with my husband, I burst into tears that I had been trying to hold back. I had been scared ever since I heard the conversation this morning. I'm sorry I let you take a bath after hearing that conversation. I cried and apologized to Marvin. It's okay. I'm really glad you didn't go in there. I know you've been through some tough times, and I'm sorry I didn't recognize it. Marvin hugged me. The next day, my husband forced my mother-in-law and sister-in-law out. My in-laws had moved just before we got married, and this house is in my husband's name, so he has the right to it. He changed the locks on the house while I was away at, at a wedding. Neither my mother-in-law nor sister-in-law work. They had a little extra money that we had given them for living expenses, but it was not enough to rent the house. They asked for a relative's house, but apparently my husband had told his relatives about what has happened, and they didn't welcome my in-laws. They both took out loans to rent a house, but they can't get approved at all because they don't work. 
They have little or no work experience, and since this story has become a rumor in the neighborhood, they can't even get a part-time job. Now they're both sleeping in an internet cafe. I think they deserved it. Now it's just me and my husband in our lives. We often don't see each other because of the irregular work hours, but when we have time, the two of us go to the gym together to exercise or go for a morning run. I feel very refreshed and spend time with him every day. On days when we can have dinner together, I cook a home-cooked meal. You've just finished a night shift, so you don't have to work so hard. But I am happy that my husband can enjoy my cooking. It's so delicious. Have your cooking skills improved again? My husband praises me every time. Such time is my happiness. There may be more difficulties in the future, but I hope we can stay together and help each other. Labor pains? Go to the hospital. I'm traveling with my mom. Call me when the baby is born. My husband took off to Hawaii with my mother-in-law, leaving me in pain. A few days later, he called me to ask if the baby was born. I told him the truth. Huh? I heard his dumb voice, so I hung up the phone. I am Lara, a 28 years old office worker. My husband Harry is also 28, and we got married two years ago after an office romance. My in-laws live in the next town, but Harry was the second son, so he told me before we got married that he didn't think it would mean living with his parents. When I asked him about other details, he told me that his mother was traditional and prefers her first son. And there was a considerable difference in the treatment of Harry and his older brother. So Harry did not seem to like much a family. In fact, at the time our wedding greetings, my mother-in-law said, The eldest son will take over this house. So don't count on the inheritance of the family. I had never counted on it in the first place, but after hearing this, I had not a good impression on my in-laws. At the time, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law lived alone at my parents' house because my father-in-law was working alone overseas, and when we visited them, my mother-in-law was like, I have to cook dinner and do laundry for your brother. So can you go home as soon as you are done here? Harry apologized to me on the way home every time for his mother-in-law's attitude. However, a turning point came to us. Harry's elder brother had eloped with his fiancée and disappeared. My mother-in-law had a big problem with my eldest son's fiancée and said something like, As the eldest son's wife and my daughter-in-law, she pressured her and made fun of her. My mother-in-law was very much against the marriage, but her first son decided to leave my mother-in-law to protect his fiancée's mental health and to marry her peacefully. This led the mother-in-law to turn the brunt of her affection toward Harry. At first, I didn't like the fact that she was leaning on me because my brother was gone. It is like as if I replaced my brother. And he refused to accept such an attitude from his mother. However, his mother tried to win Harry over in every way she could, and Harry gradually softened his attitude toward her. And so, a few months after the eldest son disappeared, he was saying, My brother is the worst kind of man. He has caused trouble to my mom so many times. And now that is how he is returning the favor. I'm ashamed to be a brother to such a man. I was glad that his relationship with my mother-in-law had been restored. But I began to feel a little uneasy about him taking her side any longer. Harry and I were in the same company, so we had the same days off, and we often spent holidays together. However, Harry began to go out to his mother's house every holiday, as his mother invited him. I feel sorry for my mom, because my dad is having an affair and my brother is away. So I want to spend my holiday with my mom as much as possible. That's what he told me. I understand how you feel, but I want you to spend more time with me as a couple. We go back to the same house on weekends, 
and it would be fine if we could at least use the time off for mom. I mean, Lara, come with me. Have you forgotten how you were told to get the hell out of there before? Or how you were treated so evilly? Besides, your mother wasn't very welcoming me. Things were different then. So how long are you going to talk about the past? Harry's comment surprised me. But I had seen his change and decided to accompany Harry on his visit to my parents in those house in the faint hope that perhaps my mother in those attitude towards me might have changed as well. On the following holiday, when I visited my in-laws house with Harry, I realized that I had been naive. My mother-in-law met us at the front door, and upon seeing my face, she blatantly frowned at me. I immediately realized that I was not welcome. But Harry, who was completely oblivious to the situation, told his mother smilingly that I wanted to spend the holiday with him, so that's why he brought me along. Oh, Lara, you must be tired from work. Why don't you take a good rest? I'm working too, Mom. And Lara has enough energy to play around, so don't worry about it. Harry's good-tempered words made my mother-in-law smile as if she was up to something. And this expression was not my imagination. But rather, my mother-in-law began to say various things to me. My body has been hurting lately, and I can't even clean properly. Lara? Can you clean the house for me? At first, it was just this kind of request, but gradually her demands escalated. She began to send me out to buy groceries, arrange gifts for relatives, and even clean my mother-in-law's friend's house. While I was dealing with my mother-in-law's request, Harry and my mother-in-law were firmly enjoying their holidays, going out to eat, to the movies, to massage, and so on. After the first few times, I told Harry, I'll stop going to your parents' house because all I do is help your mother and you go out with her. So there's no point in going. As a wife, you could at least help out at your husband's parents' house. Besides, we go to the house and leave the house together. And in return, I'm taking you out to dinner. So he refused my suggestion of not accompanying him to his mother's house. He says dinner, but it was only the same fast food restaurant. However, I couldn't disagree with his opinion because I indeed am the daughter-in-law and ended up helping out at my in-law's house on my days off, which meant I couldn't rest at all. The reason I didn't want to go to my in-law's house was not only this, but also something else mindless words from my mother-in-law and Harry. You were so cheerful when you were playing with me. So stop being so grumpy when you were helping my mother. Harry's ex-girlfriends used to smile at me all the time. The only reason you couldn't come to dinner with us in the first place was that you were too slow with your cleaning and stuff. How can you do your job like that? Harry and my mother-in-law not only blamed me or my work, but also my parents. How in the world did your parents educate Lara to be so slow at house chores? Even the last time I asked to arrange the gift for my relatives, you chose something that made me feel as if our house was poor. I had been asked to send gifts to her relatives, and my mother-in-law had asked me to pay for them. You always live on Harry's money, so you should pay for at least on an occasion like this. She forced me to do so. We both work, so we live on our salaries together. Are you saying that Harry's salary isn't enough? No, it's not like that. My mother-in-law and I had a conversation in which she twisted my words, so I gave up the dialogue with her and followed her instructions about the gift. However, one out of the relatives who received the gift commented to me to thank me. My mother-in-law now started complaining about the kind of gift of what I sent them. My salary is not that much, so I couldn't send anything too expensive. But if it should be appropriate for you, I still think it would be better for you to 
choose the gift and pay for it from now on. As expected. I was also mad at my mother-in-law's unreasonable complaint, so I talked back. My mother-in-law still wanted to say something. That's why I hate poor people. And so she ended the conversation. My mother-in-law seemed to have told the story to Harry. Why did you say to mom? You want money from her. Harry was not in a good mood. She didn't like the gift I arranged for her relatives and called me poor. So I just asked her to make her own arrangements next time. My mom just tried to teach you how to get along with your relatives as a wife later on. So she asked you to do so. I've never met these relatives. And they didn't even congratulate me on my marriage. I can't send such an expensive gift to many households. And who is only a relative to my husband? Harry sighed deliberately in response to my reaction and said, I'll pay for now on, and you will arrange it next time again. No, I won't. I simply answered him, went into the bedroom, and broke off the conversation. I had somehow sensed that my relationship with Harry was cooling down, and I knew I had to do something about it. But soon, I found out that I was pregnant. When I told Harry about the pregnancy, he was so happy that I was surprised by his reaction. I'm going to work harder for you and the child, so if there's anything I can do to help, please let me know right away. He stopped going back to my in-law's house for a while and did house chores on his days off to take care of me, which made me very happy in the early stages of my pregnancy, as I had been feeling lonely about Harry's attitude. And then, I reported to my mother-in-law as well, as my father-in-law, who was working alone overseas. I'm coming home once to celebrate. He was going to visit me. My mother-in-law was very eager to know the sex of the child, and she repeatedly said, Since this is your first child, you must give birth to a healthy boy and raise him to be the heir to our family. When I found out the sex of the child was a boy, I wondered whether or not to tell Harry and my mother-in-law. Then, when I was in a stable stage of pregnancy, I visited my parents' home again. And at that time, my mother-in-law said, If it's a boy, we'll take him in, and I'll raise him myself. My grandchildren will be happier if they are raised by me, who raised my two sons well, than by a mother like you. Harry was also impressed by her words. Lara, you have to work. And if my mom takes care of the child, you can focus on your work and work hard again. I felt a sense of crisis at this time and decided to say, the child is a girl. I immediately lied. Then my mother-in-law looked at me with obvious displeasure and said, the you should take care of it yourselves, because I have no obligation to raise a girl. Next time, have a boy. I was stunned by this statement from my mother-in-law, but I remember feeling somewhat relieved that she would not interfere with me in any way. After this pregnancy report, my mother-in-law requested I help her do the chores. Since you got in the stable period, come and clean our house. However, I avoided this request by lying, that I was suffering from morning sickness, and I did my best to avoid any contact with my mother-in-law during the pregnancy. Since my mom is going to be a grandmother, it will be better for you to have a good relationship with her now, for the sake of the child, wouldn't it? You're saying something like this so easily, but she hates me. I answered shortly to Harry once again began to take my mother-in-law's side and Harry started going out to his parents' house again every other weekend. And this, although it was so close to the due date. Once the baby is born, I won't be able to spend as much time with my mom. So I want to save some time to spend alone with her while I still can. They even made plans for a trip to Hawaii. The baby will be born soon. And we cannot predict the due date so exactly. 
So please don't go on a trip overseas. I asked Gahari repeatedly, but he would not listen to me at all. And I decided to tell my parents about the whole situation in case of an emergency. The reason I had not talked to my parents before was that if I told them, they would surely recommend divorce. And I wanted to avoid that option because I was hopeful of repairing the situation for the better. Then, a few weeks before my due date, I had tremendous contractions. Coincidentally, Harry and my mother-in-law were scheduled to leave for Hawaii in the evening, and my contractions started before noon, so I felt bad that their trip would be cancelled, but I asked the hurry to take me to the hospital, because I was having contractions. Harry rushed to take me to the hospital. Does that mean you were going to have the baby today? He asked the doctor. It's prodromal labor, so it's not going to happen right away, but in a few hours. He heard the doctor's reply to that point. You are at the hospital. If anything goes wrong, it won't be a problem. Call me when the baby is born. I've been on the phone with my mom for a while now, rushing me to hurry up. He walked away from the hospital, ignoring the doctor's and nurse's attempts to stop him. I was so disappointed in Harry's behavior, in my dosed state of consciousness, that I immediately contacted my parents. I could not give them the details of the situation, but my mother rushed to the hospital, and my father arrived later too, as my husband was not there at the time of labor, and I delivered a healthy baby boy later that day. While at the hospital, during my recovery, I explained to my parents what had happened, and they were, of course, furious and wanted me to get a divorce right away. On the third night after the birth of my child, I received a call from Harry. I couldn't call easily because of the time difference. Is it time for the baby to be born? Your daughter is no longer with us. What do you mean? I gave birth to a boy, so I never had a daughter in the first place. I suddenly remembered the lie I had told at the time and decided to shock Harry and my mother-in-law. I can't live with you anymore, Harry. How could you go on an overseas trip at a time like this? We don't need a wife who can't even bear a child. I could hear his mother yelling behind him. Harry was putting the phone on speaker to listen to me, with his mother about the birth of our child. I decided to put mine on speakers as well for my parents and to record the conversation. So, do you agree that we'll get divorced? I didn't recognize you as my daughter-in-law at all, to begin with. So you made a complete stranger pay for the gifts for your relatives. Don't talk to me like I'm a hustler. Then please return the money. I'll return such a small amount of money, you miser. My parents got angry when they heard what my mother-in-law said. You haven't even had a child yet. And you're brazen enough to call yourself my daughter-in-law. I had a child, and it's a healthy boy. I will raise him well, so it's none of your business. A boy? Then he is the heir of our family. My mother-in-law's voice brightened a little at my words, and I couldn't endure anymore. That's not true. You've talked so many things about me, and you were so blazing as to make my son your heir. Please hear the rest from the lawyer after you come back to the States. I hang up the phone, listening to my mother-in-law and Harry ranting over the phone. Then, after leaving the hospital, I immediately returned to my parents' house and started to prepare for the divorce. With the help of my parents, I got a lawyer. Upon hearing this news, my father-in-law paid a visit to my parents' house before Harry and my mother-in-law returned and I let him listen to the record of the phone call of the other day and explain how I have been treated by them. He also went to the maternity hospital and had the doctor who had treated me explain to him about Harry's behavior. A few days later, when they returned home, I met them together with my father-in-law and my lawyer and started a discussion even before they could settle down. Here, I demanded a divorce and child support from Harry. 
if we knew the child is a boy. We would not have treated my dear daughter-in-law Lara like that. My mother-in-law continued. What do you mean by that kind of treatment? That's what my father-in-law asked my mother-in-law. And as expected, she was reluctant to talk about what she had said and done. So she clammed up. I couldn't mention everything to him. But I let my father-in-law listen to the recording of the phone call of the other day. So you don't have to hide it. You recorded it? What a nasty person you are. How dare you say that? You're talking about heirs. But this family is not that traditional. No, it doesn't need one. My father-in-law shouted at her. Harry had been mumbling something to take his mother's side. Harry, you were the second son. So why don't you just shut up? That has nothing to do with the situation right now. He raised his voice loudly. No, it has. I will sell this house. And money will be inherited by my eldest son. I'm going to cut ties with bloodless people like you. Do you mean my boy is coming back? Harry seemed to be astonished at his mother's joy at the mention of her eldest son's name. And since then, he stopped talking to support his mother. I figured it was my mother-in-law's problem from here. So I decided to leave with my lawyer. And a few days later, the divorce was finalized. And I was off to a fine start in life as a single mother. Apparently, my father-in-law really did sell off his house and sent my mother-in-law back to her parents' house. Then he went back to work overseas. He had been giving her quite a bit of money for living expenses. But after hearing about the incident of gifts for the relatives, he cut that living expense down to a much smaller amount. And my mother-in-law started working part-time at her own family's company. Harry first tried to take his mother under his wing. Because of your wife, I was evicted from my home, which was my only connection to my eldest son. And then it was sold. He was broken-hearted when his mother told him that. I explained the situation to the company and asked to work shorter hours. So the story of Harry and I's divorce spread throughout the company. And since one of the employee's mother was a nurse working at the maternity hospital, word of Harry's behavior also spread, and now he's feeling very ashamed of himself. As for me, I'm back at home, a little farther from the office. But my parents, who are excited about their first grandchild, are taking care of my baby. And I'm trying to rebuild my life while raising him comfortably. I have made up my mind that if I ever remarry and give birth to a second child in the future, I will raise this child with lots of love and without discrimination.